Okay, well, I doubt if he's going to answer the question. It was sufficiently close enough in time in order to get this within the exception. I'm asking. Thank you, Jim. Can you step back out? Okay. Um, Let me find. I'll put the video in there. Officer Clinton Hayes? Yes. All right. And uh, are you familiar with him having patrolled in that particular zone? Yes. And uh, do you know if he would have been patrolling in that zone around or about the time you were assigned to it? Uh, if we were both working <laughs> that night, then he probably was, yes. And would he have also been um, one who uh, is... I'll refer to the question. Actually, we'll just start the question. Do you know if he was doing directed patrol on that particular day? I can't remember. Okay. To your knowledge, what was the busiest night for Club Preview? Mm -hmm. Objection uh, relevance. Very relevant, huh? Mm -hmm. Ever ruled. Mondays and I believe Saturdays. I am now showing you what has been previously admitted as states exhibits two tango through six tango, and they will be published on the screen. Yeah, I know this part of the proceedings can be kind of boring, but I love this part. I love hearing first account eyewitness testimony, hearing from you know police officers and you know some of the nine one one dispatchers exactly what happened behind the scenes. So yeah, I love I love this stuff. Angela said eighty eight Brown is doing a really nice job of not. Uh, letting losing objections shake him up. Yeah, he's taking a moment to regather himself and he keeps moving. Uh, it's now coming on the screen. States exist as two tangos. Oh, okay, Amy, I missed it. Yeah. I missed it. Dang. Uh, let me do this. And these, Your Honor, for the court's notification, they were admitted through Officer Clinton Hayes and Tom. The title of the video is the title of the video in the description is um, Judge Whitaker find out finds out exactly what happened at Club Crucial. So I've got the link in the description. If y'all don't see it, you can refresh the video. Previously, a state's exhibit two tango, um, and you now see it on the screen. Yeah, thank you. That's the uh, front face of Crucial. And is this how you remember it to have looked? in uh, April of 2015? Yes. Okay. And um, <clears throat> is Club Crucial still open and functioning by any It is, yes. Uh, yes, it is, but uh, I don't work at night anymore. Right. And does it still look like this, or has it changed to your knowledge? The uh, red stripe is no longer there, and they have a uh, security gates in front of both driveways. Right, and I am now transitioning your attention to States Exhibit 3 Tango. All right. Um, what are we looking at here at States 3 Tango? That's crucial. All right. Um, do you see the red stripe that you saw on the last exhibit? No. All right. Do you see the security gates that you just talked about? Yes. And were those security gates there in 2015? No. You know around or about when those gates were placed there? Uh, no, maybe in the last year or so. Now showing you States Exhibit 4 Tango. Exactly, um, Stacy. Uh, do, uh, do you see the brown uh, structures on that property? Yes. Were those brown structures there in 2015, to your recollection? No. Do um, you know around or about when those brown structures got there? No. And uh, is it, uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, that's crucial from the parking lot. Do you see any uh, tire tread or marks on the ground on this exhibit? Or? Yes. All right. Um, and um, to your, and based on your training experience, what's, why would marks like that be on the ground? Your Honor, that would call speculation, I'd object. Yeah, he don't know. Uh, tire tread would be on the uh, pavement because maybe somebody was driving in doing donuts. 
Okay. Is that what that looks like to you? A donut? Yes. Is that some of the rowdy things that you described that would happen over there? Yes. I'm showing you the final uh, a state's exhibit that will be published from this category of state's exhibit six tango. Uh, what are we looking at? What is the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? What are the ladies and ge gentlemen of the jury looking at here in state's exhibit six tango? That's still the uh, parking lot of uh, Crucial, but it's the uh, facing east. Okay. And what street is that running um, perpendicular to um, the building? That's going to be Donnelly Hollowell Parkway. Right. <laughs> Sir, from this picture, is the ground cracked Earlier as well? You stated that Objection. <laughs> Club Crucial was about two miles or so from 1428 Adele. About how much time in terms of minutes would it take for you to get from Adele to Donnelly Hollowell Parkway, Parkway where uh, Club Crucial is situated? About Maybe five. about four or five minutes. And when you say four or five minutes, are you talking about him driving? Oh, I forgot to switch this. Hold on a second, y'all. I know what I did wrong. My bad, guys. Give me a second. And to be sure, is Club fix this. and Adela Avenue in the same beat? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, do you know what beat uh, Club Crucial sits in? Crucial. I have a rule. Crucial is one of the uh, 109's beat. I want to turn your attention back to when the, the moment when you entered inside of the residence situated at 1428. Earlier you stated that you saw the gunshot victim. Can you describe around or about her age to you at that time? Mid 20s, uh, late 20s. Can you describe her demeanor? Uh, she was excited. She was uh, upset. Um, how was she positioned, if you will, inside of the home? Um, I can't really remember, but I believe she was, uh, when I spoke with her, she was lying prone on her stomach. Did you happen to get a date of birth for the victim um, when you were investigating this particular incident? Yes. All right. Would you have included that... Uh, uh, would you have included that in your report? Yes. And are you sure at the time that you made contact with her that she was in her mid to late 20s? There we go. Uh, let me refresh my recollection. All right. I'll give you yeah. a, a few moments to refresh and then look back up at me when you come so Far. I'm going to ask you a different question um, that I think I want to circle back first. Okay. A few moments ago, did I hear you correctly when you said that she was excited? Yes. All right. um, when you approached her and saw where she was positioned, uh, did you see where about on her body she was struck by a bullet? The uh, upper right buttocks. And um, was she alive, alert, conscious? Yes. Is that yes to all three? Yes, she was alert, conscious, and breathing. She was alert. Hey, yo, come on now. Not the cap. We know she had, she said she had the vodka bottle by the bed. Everybody was downstairs smoking. Nah, we're not, we're not buying it. Good morning, Lauren. Good to see you. I'm not buying and, it at all. Um, was she in need of yeah, emergency medical services? Yes. And were emergency medical services called at that time? Yes. And she was smoking um, and drinking. Do you recall, um, who called? Uh, I requested uh, Grady EMS to come out and uh, transport female. Did you speak with Miss Bell ever after that day? No. <clears throat> During your investigation,
investigation uh, of this matter, did you learn if there was anyone else at the hospital? Did you see anyone else in the home um, while you were there? Yes. All right. About how many persons did you see and observe there? Uh, from the start, when I got there, there was six. All right. Okay. So, um, do you recall the names of those persons? Yes. All right. She was okay. drunk and high. The uh, other four individuals who were inside the residence, if I can go to my report. Sure. Taiwan Marquise Marsh, Cecilia Davis, Diamond Mills. Diamond was the one that called, I believe. Zeranisha Coakley. That called uh, 911. How old did these persons appear to you? They all appeared to be in their 20s. Late or early 20s? Uh, probably about mid 20s. Do you know if they were residents of that particular home or passersby? Calls for hearsay. Sustained. It's not important anyway. Move on. All right. Uh, what was their demeanor like when you encountered those four? Hey, go. Come on, Mr. They were Brown. all uh, upset and um, excitable. How were they dressed? Uh, they were all wearing street clothes, like they had been up. At 4.06 in the morning? That's correct. All but, um, I believe, one female. Papa Brown saying they were up past bedtime <laughs> in their street clothes. <laughs> I thought it was strange, too, though. They probably came from the club. At the time that you made contact with these four individuals, was the male in the Famerica sweatshirt still present or gone from the premises? Sustained. Was it a school night? Says Kirsty Ann. Well, actually, okay. overruled. That particular question wasn't asked before. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the male in the uh, brown fan America shirt, he was no longer at the location. Is that... So you, earlier you described that there were four persons inside there at that time, inside the home days, at, at that time. At that time... Uh, when I initially arrived, we had the male in the brown Fan America shirt, the four people that I named just a moment ago, and uh, the victim. Okay. Was there ever a time that you spoke with anyone else? Yes. What were their names? If I go to the report. Sure. <laughs> so I think at the location, a uh, Kanisha yeah. Harris arrived. How was she dressed? She was dressed in street clothes. Did she come into the house? Yes. What was her demeanor? Uh, she was upset as well. About how old did she appear to you? About in her 20s. Okay. Did she come alone? I'm not sure. All right. I want to talk about their activity inside of the home a little bit further. While inside of the home, can you describe the interior of the home for the ladies and gentlemen here? Uh, the interior of the home had what looked to be other. Um, here we go with this line of questioning the again. Wall into the interior, but it had been plastered over and covered. Each individual. Home. And when you say plaster over, can you describe a little bit more detail if you can for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? What you mean by that? Like repair. The bullets came through the home and then someone came through and put drywall plaster over each individual home or hole. Okay. So let's let's get it together, y'all. So is he saying that 
this house had been shot up before and that they had already put plaster over those or he's saying when it got shut up that night then they fixed it this is conf yeah this is confusing i think what he's trying to say is it got shot up before but he's not making that clear but i think that's what he's saying and did you also see new bullet defects inside of the home that weren't plastered yes Yeah, so he's saying there have been uh, there have been shots fired at that house before. Okay, yeah, I don't know how he knows Wright Street. That's what I'm saying. Do you have personal knowledge of when that uh, those older bullet uh, defects? Uh, Objection. At how, when they got there? Yes. Uh, well, I did. Personal personal. Personal. Oh no. no. Okay. Uh, yeah, what? Why would he ask the obje objection hearsay? What? How? How would he even know? How would he be able to verify that they're gunshots that were covered up in the first place? What? The defense must be sleeping over there. Either that, or I'm just wrong. But this line of Was questioning there a time is weird. That you exited the home at 1428 Adele Avenue Southwest. Yes. All right. And uh, what, if anything, occurred at that point? Uh, I spoke to a uh, resident who lived in the neighborhood. What was that resident's name? If I can go to the report. Yeah. Anthony Travis. And about how old did he look to you? Uh, about in his 20s, maybe upper 20s. Okay. Did you initiate contact with him or did he initiate contact with you? He initiated contact. I don't contact know how they're allowing this. This this is weird. All right. Um, now nah, it was Lil Mike. Lil Mike and Quez uh, lived over there. Objection, Your Honor, calls for here. May I respond, Your Honor? You can. It is, in fact, a present sense impression and it is also um, going to be an effect on the listener himself. Your, your uh, Honor, it's not there, those two things. If, if Hang on. Here. Let me hear what he's saying. What he is going to testify, what, we, what, what I am saying, we expect the testimony to be, is going to uh, be tantamount to a present sense impression. If I may approach to further clarify, I don't want to put that on the record. Do you want to come out to the bench? Yeah, because I don't know. What? I don't know what Mr. Brown's saying. I want to ask Kel Bell this. Hey, Kel Bell, since you're back, quick question. If an attorney asks a police officer what he observed, in in the house when he walked in and the police officer says oh i observed the walls and it looks like there were bullet holes in the walls that had been plastered over and then the attorney asked the officer um how long do you think the bullet holes are in your opinion how long do you think the bullet holes have been there would you object to that as cause for hearsay because my question is, how in the world does the officer know how long the bullet holes have been, even in his opinion? Like his, he doesn't know. Comic says, yes, I would. But I want to I wanna know what the attorney thinks. And shout out to uh, Michelle. Thank you for the super chat. I'll be reading super chats shortly. Good morning, buddy. Good to see you. Do you have any idea how, what the, what do you expect the witness's answer to be when you ask him the time that elapsed um, I, I pause for speculation jim says okay close enough for the uh, exception to apply in this, this is a weird uh, question a set of facts, Your Honor. Uh, but i will say uh that i will not make a misrepresentation to the court i, I will do as the court is instructed uh, nonetheless while still re uh, reading this case law to further bolster my belief uh, or the state's expectation uh that uh, and support uh that is sufficiently close enough in time Okay, well, I doubt if he's going to answer the question. It was sufficiently close enough in time in order to get this within the exception. I'm asking. Thank you, Jim. Can you step back out? Yeah, and also. Okay, Queen K says yes, objection. I also, how on the, to the hearsay point, unless they had doc, somehow documented that they were 
in fact, bullet holes. I mean, couldn't he say that about anything? I, yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm not going to argue with the attorneys. So I'm just asking y'all for clarity because it's just weird that he could say, oh, yeah, there's a bullet hole over there and it looks like it got covered up. Like, what, are you, what are you talking about? Does he have x-ray vision too? I told y'all, Officer Pitts is Superman. I gave you that Superman. instruction as though it was an option, <laughs> but we'd actually like for you to stay out so we call you, but you didn't know that. Shout out to Officer Pitts, man. Thank you for, uh, so, thank you for letting me know, Jim. 370 Georgia 757 and Queen K says yes, up. objection. Georgia appeals that. Call for speculation and definitely okay. would have objected, Sorry. says Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. So do you have any idea, um, Mr. Brown, the amount of time he's going to say elapsed. I would say about 20 minutes, but I'm going to confirm that before I skip that. And make it well, I mean, obviously, but OK, well, I don't know if 20 minutes is going to get you within the exception. Most, I, I guess we'll see what he says. But. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you to everyone who's liked the video so far, too. Appreciate y'all. Uh, Hilton's probably on another vacation with uh, Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis is on the run right now. <laughs> Your Honor. Yes, sir. I was going to skip it. What, what I would suggest and what is probably appropriate is for uh, the prosecutor to give the court, and I think you asked for this, a proffer uh, of what the witness would say. Mm -hmm. the, the Brantley decision um, uh, does give in division five gives a pretty specific definition of present sense impression that, and i don't know that there's been a case that says well you know five minutes is good 20 minutes is good 25 minutes is good i, I don't mm -hmm. know i've not seen one that that goes with that much specificity um but i think the case is clear and the case law other than brantley is clear that there has to be a significant amount of i use the word contemporaneity uh, if that's the proper word oh lord um, has to be sufficiently contemporaneous um, to be free of any sort of misrepresentation by the witness. Um, and although it doesn't have to be immediately contemporaneous, <laughs> it does have to be what making the a statement right at the time they're observing it. I think the cases contemplate that it has to be made very soon in time thereafter. And at this point, without a proffer, we just don't know uh, what time period we're talking about so that we know whether it meets the definition. Lauren okay, said, for now, well, that yeah, I see um, substantial contemporaneity, which that's a word I've never heard before, <laughs> of the event and the statement um, to negate the likelihood of deliberate mm. or conscious misrepresentation. So if that's what we're evaluating, then this may be within that. So thank you for pointing that out. I've heard of con contemporaneous, but Queen K saying he's saying contemporary, contemporary. Is there any indication in this Brantley case how how long past the event the grandmother's statement was? Contemporary, contemporaneous. <laughs> Yo, I don't know what's going on. They have unhelpfully declined to include that information within the case, it appears. <laughs> so. Rice Street says, stop yes, before you catch a stroke. Yeah, I'm struggling. I just want to turn the court's attention to uh, four Kappa Kappa, uh, which has been admitted into evidence. It is the call for services uh, report that was admitted prior to this witness testifying. Okay. Uh, and uh, the court inquired as to the amount of contemporaneity uh -huh. uh, that took place between the statement and the call. Uh -huh. And with that exhibit, uh, I do have an answer. What is it, this word? The call was received at 4.06, uh, and uh, Officer Pitts arrived at 4.08. Okay. Um, right. So I'm asking <laughs> any idea how long after the event he spoke with whomever this witness is? I and said, you, you were contemporaneity. saying you within 20 minutes. So. Jeez. May I ask for a moment to speak with witness to give a proper explanation? Um, outside of the courtroom? No. I, our position would be bring the witness in. And let's have the witness answer that question. Yeah. Contemporaneity. You can just ask him to step back in. Contempor contemporaneity. Contemporaneity. <laughs> 
<laughs> we gonna be doing this all day. Lord have mercy. Yeah, y'all need to let this go. State, just let's pick a different word. Brothers in there trying too hard. Y'all making us look bad. <laughs> oh, God. Doug Weinstein back there yeah. laughing. Max Sharp was back there laughing. Contemporaneity. I mean, I already, I already make us look bad up there when I'm trying to read. I have a couple of questions to ask you for the course. Oh, man. If you recall, um, Around or about which time do you recall the call coming in for service? We already know that. Yeah, Just get to the point. Sure. Do you know uh, around or about uh, the time that elapsed between you arriving to the scene and speaking with uh, Mr. Anthony Travis? Was it uh, hours or was it a few minutes? Minutes. Okay. All right. Y'all want to ask him anything about that? Yes, please. May I? You may. Uh, may I stay here, Judge? And if I speak you to can, microphone? yes. Um, Contemporaneity oh, is, Pitt, is it? correct. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, on that note, were you the person that spoke to Anthony Travis? Yes. And you indicated previously you got to the scene and you went inside, spoke to some people. So give us an estimate as best you can uh, from the time of your arrival to the time you actually speak to Mr. Travis or he comes to you. How much time had passed? Uh, maybe about 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. All right. Thank you. You can step back outside. 